Right, hopefully, uh, let me just go over here on my desktop and make sure that we're live streaming and everything looks good. I want to make sure that... Uh, got a good camera angle. Let me adjust my camera just a little bit. Should be good right there. There's a little bit of a of a delay so I can see my camera angle. I want to make sure you guys see everything <laughs> on here. Uh, but just to catch up real quick, what I'm what I'm doing is um so I'm building this refrigerator, this abandoned refrigerator. Uh, I've got what I've got done on this is the outer shell uh, the inside, I've 3D printed some different stuff to fit inside here. Shelves, covers, and things like that. The GE logo, I've airbrushed the inside uh, insulation foam and stuff like that uh, in there. And um, right now, really, all I want to go through and do, and I wanted to share it with you folks while I did it, the um, sort of detailing out the outer cabinet of the refrigerator. Um, Jason. Uh, and... To do that, I'm using a product I've never used before. Uh, they're called Vallejo Pigments. And this particular this particular set that I bought came in a pack of four. And uh, they are the Rust Kit. If I still have the wrapper around here, I would share the wrapper with you. But I'll link them in the, the description of, the, of this live video uh, later. Um, not sure where I put the wrapper. But... They are Vallejo pigments, and this is the rust uh, kit. They come in a kit. There's four of these bottles, and they're one. The weight uh, is 1.18 fluid ounces. There's four colors. There's old rust. Then there's rust. Then there's new rust. And then there is brown iron oxide. And so what these are, these are just little powders. And this is my first time using them, and I really... I started doing one side already and I really like the way that it's, uh, let me turn the light down just a little bit so we're not so bright on there. There we go. And I just uh, really like the way that these are adding that little layer of rust uh, to, to this cabinet of the refrigerator. It makes it easier so I don't have to try to airbrush it on there or I don't have to try to stipple it on with a sponge and dry brush it. it just It's just really cool looking and you'll see it because I'm going to do it live. And uh, I think you folks might find some value in this nice little product. Uh, I've got one side done already. Uh, and actually, I might throw a little throw a little in that hole right there. Uh, we'll come down with an old rust. And it's a little bit darker. You can see in here, there are just a little, little pigments in there. And I'm just going to take a little bit here, come to the hole. And it's just a matter of blending this where you want it, you know, and rust would come down out of these little holes. Uh, in my mind, it would anyway. <laughs> so we're just going to take these and blend these out. And then whatever you don't use, you can just shake back into the, into the bottle. We'll put a little coming down out of here. And these were, I think for the set, they were like 18 bucks. And they give you instructions on how to use it, or how to use them, which is nice, like I say, because I've never, never used these before. You just load them up on the brush. You brush them into your scene. I've got a couple different size brushes here too. Stiffer brush seems to work best. Except when you're blending, when you're blending, then you can use a little thinner brush, it seems like works best. And you just light circular motions and kind of just rub it down where you want it.
but it gets a nice effect. Let's see who's. Then I'll tap the other off and I'll use some on the other side, but. Just kind of blend this where you want it. I'm just using what's left on the brush here. You know. And uh, that's old rust. And then the darker brown oxide rust, I, I like it too. This is really, really nice. You can tap a little bit into your lid. And then uh, with a small brush, go in and darken up just a little spots in there it's like that and then uh see what it did there kind of went from dark down to light kind of fanned it out a little bit like that and I like that it's a pretty cool effect and then you can use it I guess this extra stuff here I'll just tap it onto the side and I'll use that on the other side of it but let's see what we got here a little rust dripping down out of the holes here it's pretty cool man I like it this is a pretty neat little product let me put a little bit of it in over here work it into this hole a little bit Blend what's in the brush, just blend it off in the corner here. I may have went a little crazy with the rust, but it's okay, you can't never have enough rust. <laughs> I like it, man. Uh, you can go as cuckoo with this as you want, man. You know. It's pretty neat. I'm going to flip this around and do another, another side here. Start on the bottom and do a little bit of uh, the old rust. I'll just tap a little bit in this. Do you hear? We'll start up here on the top. Like rust is dripping down from the, the top up here. Just load a little bit on. And just work it around up there. Blend it. This refrigerator's been sitting in some old house or some basement or some industrial setting for who knows how long. Water's dripping down from a leaky old ceiling. You know, and this old 60s style steel cabinet refrigerator is just discoloring over time. And, uh, Drag a little bit back up here, darken it in. some of that dust that's on there already so I don't waste it using 
the edge of the brush or the whole brush, whatever you want. Just make some streaks coming down the cabinet. I left a lot of texture in this uh, cabinet when I built this so that it would look cool. I envisioned using these pigments and some other little techniques. So I left a lot of this really textured up in here uh, to... Uh... Hey buddy, what's going on? Yeah, rust is character, man. <laughs> Unless it's on a person. <laughs> I don't want to be rusty. But yeah, I'm just... So what I'm making is uh, I built a uh, refrigerator, refrigerator here. Uh, I'm not done with it. I still got to put the handle and stuff on, but I'm doing the outside cabinet of it right now. Uh, 3D printed some shelving and some doors and whatnot. I uh, rusted out one side with these pigments and then uh i'm just online i'm sharing with everybody you know the how i'm using these uh, vallejo pigments on here to add some rust i airbrushed this this is the inside of the refrigerator door the foam that would be in an old uh, 60s style refrigerator kind of torn up with holes in it and stuff uh, and i airbrushed all this so that's what i'm doing man i'm just having fun with these powders haven't used them before, but man, they, they seem to be pretty neat. I, well, I like them so far, you know, without a doubt. Get these on here and blend these in on the top edge here. What I like about this style of refrigerator is it's rounded edges. You know, uh, I looked up some different 60s styles refrigerators and uh, of course they were all steel and cool looking man and they had those really rounded, rounded tops and really rounded doors and I really liked that. Uh, and so when I built this I wanted to keep those rounded tops and uh, so this whole cabinet is actually made out of one thin piece of foam wrapped around a styrofoam or wrapped around a... Uh, what do you call it a foam board uh poster board uh structure you know and uh that helped me keep some of these curves in the refrigerator it was a bit of a chore to to do but uh but it worked out nice we're just going to go through and and leaving all this texture in here worked out to my benefit because these powders really get inside there and and that texture gives it some uh something to 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 grab on to and to and to you know lay inside and it makes it nice just kind of blend this out a little bit what's on the brush up here but man these colors are really nice i mean you can see that really nicely but uh they really they really do come out nice and i'm sure that uh once i'm completely done building these colors and stuff up it definitely be pretty nice but uh it's a little too white right there i gotta fill that in a little bit with something later on <laughs> it never ends man you always want to do something more you know but uh and i'm just using two of these four colors right now keep them to the side so i don't mix them up because uh, i will mix them up without a doubt and i'm just dropping some on where i want it and then i'll just blend it and shape it here you know after you know we've got a lot of texture over here on the sides they will come up a little bit and we'll just work this stuff up just real light touch i'm just making circular motions here blending it in real nice to all this getting it in all these nooks and crannies down in here kind of feathering it up moving it around just whatever you like and i'll flip this around and so i get a good 
dry brush coming up I'll just use the side of my brush and get some nice streaks in there nice and dark around the bottom just build it up and then we can go back in there with some some lighter rust the color uh, what's this other color this is um, old rust I'm using old rust and brown iron oxide right now I like that 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 uh, old rust man it's a nice nice orange almost like a nice sunset man it's nice we'll just tap a little bit in here in the white areas and just uh, make those white areas not white we'll just blend it into the the brown iron oxide is that what it is yeah brown iron oxide color so we get a nice little transition in there of I'm just making little circular motions where the two colors meet and kind of blending them together. There we go, I'm dragging it back. But I like these, these are cool little, nice little product. Let me kind of bring this up on screen. I'll add some darker stuff down here along the bottom. Let's see what's our darkest color here. The brown is the darker, or the brown iron oxide is the darker of, of them all. I could go back in here uh, and darken that up just a little bit. I think I will. See how much I can put down on there on the bottom and pack it in there and they've got different kits that you can buy but this is a cool way because I don't have to try to stipple it with a wash of acrylics to try to create rust this is a little it's a uh, more I don't want to say more subtle but it's more um it just blends nicely Get that nice bright orange light off of here maybe you can kind of get a little bit of better view of that i got that hot halogen orange light on my workbench <laughs> but uh definitely see your nice product anyway that's i just wanted to share with you and Let me get a little in the very tip of the, up here.
I imagine you'd want to do this last, very last, and not do any stippling or anything over the top of this. You can seal this, it says, with an airbrush thinner. Uh, as it stands to reason, I, I have airbrush materials, but I don't have thinner. <laughs> I've got airbrush cleaner, and I don't think that's going to be the same. So I'll probably not seal any of this on here right now. It'll just sit on the outside. Uh, I mean, it's in there, but I don't want to stipple any wet stuff over the top of it because I it would probably lift it off. I mean, uh, unless I sealed it. And I don't have any sealer right now. And uh, imagine I could probably use... I don't know how well Mod Podge would go over the top of this. I have to try that and see also. But at any rate, so... This is where we're at, man. Some good old-fashioned rust. <laughs> you know? Uh, got two sides done. I would, uh, I, I think I need to get a little bit stiffer of a brush, too. Um, I don't have a small, stiff brush. Let's see what I got over here in this box of... Well, it's not a box. It's an old coffee creamer can of brushes. What I have that would be a little uh, stiffer. Nothing. None of them are very stiff. Um, none of them are really that stiff. Eh, that's all right. But at any rate... So, I think I'll go through and I'll do, I want to see how well, part of the thing about painting these 3D printed pieces is they're not, uh, you've really got to primer them first. They don't really take the acrylics too well um, on, on uh, just right over the PLA filament. So, I'd like to see how well the PLA picks up this, this powder, these pigments because it doesn't pick up acrylic paint very well. That's for sure. We'll put a little powder on here and see what it does. Looks like it took it pretty well. These, uh, this PLA, I'm not sure, I think, uh, and I haven't done much of the 3D printing and painted 3D printed pieces, but from what I have done, painting it with acrylics uh, and a brush is really, there's got to be a better way, <laughs> and I, and I, it's probably airbrush, but it really, um, it's not that exciting to paint with a brush and, and, and acrylics. These powders go right on here, though, pretty nicely. Which makes sense because it's the PLA is porous, kind of porous, and so this goes right down in there, and it looks like it's picking it up pretty well. Yeah, I picked that up pretty pretty good. Let's put a little in over here, a little splash and a little dash here and there. It goes good on that PLA, no doubt. Kind of just work it into some of these white areas. So if you're doing 3D printing and you're using the PLA, then definitely these these powders work great on on there. It's picking it up real nice. Hey, what's that snap phase? See my refrigerator I'm building? 
not done yet. I'm just trying out some of these new pigment powders here on uh, on it to see how they work and share it with you guys. It's an old style refrigerator going to be for, for Jason. But uh, so we're just going through and using some of these pigment powders. This really wouldn't be rusty right here. This is a plastic tray that goes on the bottom of the refrigerator, so that wouldn't be too rusty. Now this here is just smooth poster board that I used, and I left the white paper uh, on the poster board, so I don't know how well this will pick up the powders because it's not very porous. I did do a light sand on it uh, before I painted it, with, uh, before I stippled it with the sponge. And so, we'll see how these powders do. Ooh, ooh, that went in nice. Ooh, boy. Shut my mouth. That went in really, whoa. That, that went in really nice right there, man. I like that. Just using what's in the cap right here, so it does go a long way. I'm just getting right up here along the edges inside these creases. Kind of just packing it in there and using little circular motions to rub it around. But let me uh, see what y'all are saying. Yes. Well, I will be putting mostly body parts inside for Jason. <laughs> but let me show you what we're looking like here on camera. This is one side of it. This is another side of it here. I haven't done the top yet. I 3D printed the GE logo. I've got to put the handle on here. Like I say, I airbrushed inside here the old foam. Uh, I blended a couple colors together, some yellows and browns to get that old insulation kind of look inside there. And then I made a ceiling, not a ceiling, uh, like a ceiling that goes under the roof, but uh, the uh, magnetic kind of uh, seals that go around the old refrigerator doors. And then uh, we've just got to do some, some, uh, detail on the outside of this and add the handle and then i'll add a hinge on here and uh hopefully we'll be good man hopefully we'll be good this was a uh, definitely a first for me building a refrigerator but uh i gotta say that man it, it was a challenge but uh i definitely definitely like it you know and i've got the shelves in there these are the uh plexiglass sort of opaque frosted looking shelves and I cut those uh, out of a big sheet that I that I have and made those and so there'll be some different stuff in here when I photograph it I want to put a light in here but I think I'm gonna have to order the light the switches that I have now are for double a batteries the the, the the boxes and I can't really hide a double a battery on here very well so I'm probably gonna buy on Amazon a button button battery box uh, and wire a button battery in here and then a light inside there. I say that I'm gonna do that now, um, but we'll see if I really do. I, I did add lights to other dioramas that I have, buildings and stuff, but we'll see if I do it on this one. Um, but uh, so that's where we're at so far. So let's take a look at this door. And, uh, but right away, I mean, I like these, I like these pigments. These are nice. So on this one, I'm gonna start with a, 
little dark brown and come in this crease and kind of come down like the water had been pooling up in there and then dripping down over time. I want to kind of give give that idea. We'll see how well I do at it. <laughs> so we'll pack this in here into this crease. I did this crease with a hot with a wood burning tool. I made a nice light crease in here. Uh, and we're just going to kind of lightly drag this stuff down in whatever manner I feel like looks good to me. Pack a little bit more in here. a nice soft line up here kind of do a little rat tail kind of motion with your brush I'll go back in and try one of these other colors and see what we got. That's starting out pretty good, though. That's starting to look like some rust dripping down from the crease of that door, you know. You can see easily how you could spend hours on this. <laughs> uh, no doubt about that. Who else is on here? Let me say hi. Oh, right on, man. Yeah, a handheld hot wire cutter. Cool. Which which brand did you end up buying, uh, Snap Face? Did you go with it? There's a few brands. I think the main one I think is Proxon, but they've got some other brands, too. I don't know which one, uh, you went with. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want to leave too much of that white in there. I want to just blend the softer, with a real soft uh, motion, blend some of this other color, this um, old rust color into here. So we can get a little bit of some nice blends going on and then leave a few white st streaks and spots. And we'll blend a little bit down here in the corners. Just a little bit into these edges. Yeah, those hot wire cutters, man, are really definitely very nice tools to have.
cool, man. Looking good. Nice and rusty. Just a cheap no-name brand, and it was only 25 Hey, there you go. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. At the end of the day, what's it got to do? It's got to cut foam. And that's it. So, <laughs> you know, I was going to buy a handheld one also, but, man, it was like 67 bucks for the Proxon. I'm like, no, I don't. I'll pass. I don't want to spend 67 bucks on a hot wire. That's almost the price that I spent on the dang on the tabletop uh, thermal cutter, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you probably did well, man, with the $25 version. I'm sure you did well. And at the end of the day, like I say, what all it's got to do is, is cut foam, <laughs> you know? And I think we're starting to shape up here, man, as far as... my wire hanging in the way of course let me move this wire but uh, at the end of the day we're starting to shape up into a refrigerator here you know uh, I just like I say I got to put the uh, handle on here and I'll do that once I'll create a little plate uh, I don't know if I'll 3d print that that wouldn't be something for the PLA printer that'd be for the resin printer but it might be something I can find in my toolbox, some old piece of uh, metal that will work also. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm, I don't really want to get the resin printer <laughs> going for a simple little handle that, that I will end up having to filter out the resin and clean the vat and wash the piece. And I don't, sometimes it's better just to make something. <laughs> uh but like this here, I, I 3D printed these and this shelf inside here. I made the shelf inside there. It's just a square. I think it's a two and a half, uh, you know, by three inch um, tray with a nice lip around the edge to like a water tray in the bottom of your, the old fridge to keep a story about one of these refrigerators. Matter of fact, I say it's a tray to keep the water out of the bottom of the refrigerator. But there was one of these old refrigerators when I was a kid, man. My mom was a manager of an apartment building and it was these old style refrigerators that had the big black transformer in the bottom the freezer was up on the top but the the they had this big black transformer in the bottom and it had uh it was supposed to have one of these water trays in there and you know i'm just a kid man i didn't know nothing about nothing and uh you know somebody moved out and i went in to wipe out and clean out the refrigerator and boy if that thing didn't shock me uh, then my brother came in and he's like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> and he came over and he touched me. Uh, and the shock was going through me and going through him into the stove. <laughs> oh, don't mess with an old 60s refrigerator. It will whoop you. <laughs> but make sure it has a water pan in it. <laughs> so I made a nice little water tray here for it. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we're coming along pretty good, man. I, I'm liking the way that these pigments work out. If I had somewhere to put a tabletop one, I would. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. So snap phase. These pigments are the Vallejo pigments, and they come in a set. Um, there's four in a set. There's four colors. There's new rust. There's rust. There's old rust, and there's brown iron oxide. That's the kit that I bought, and it was like 18 bucks. But they're just a dry pigment. And you work them in with your brush uh, once you're done doing your painting. And, you know, you can create. They've got some really cool kits uh, that vary in price. But this is this is nice because I can create an effect with this with the rat tail strokes and the nice little, you know, soft circular blending that I can't really create rust with uh, like a sponge when I when I do some washes and I stipple it on. You know, I can't really create as nice a rust as, as this is giving me. Uh, and then, you know, it, it's just really nice. Uh, it's a powder to work into the into the foam piece. And so I do like them. I, I think uh, they're, they're pretty neat. I think it was 18 bucks well spent, which I can't say for everything I spend 18 bucks on. <laughs> but but this here, yes, I definitely will find use in these and some other some other ones. Um, also, they offer other kits. 
in other colors. They offer a, like a mud puddle kit too, which is kind of cool. Mud puddle. Uh, I think I'd like a little rust coming down from this uh, from this uh, GE sign here. Let's just get a little powder going around the edge here. And bring it down a little bit. Bring it down just a little bit, uh, with a little soft rat tail kind of stroke. Kind of fade that out. It's real subtle. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up with the uh, with the uh, light shining on it, but let me bring it in a little bit up to the camera. Maybe you can see it. You know, just a real subtle bit of rust coming down. Let the camera focus and let the, let the, uh, there's a little bit of a lag in, in the live. Yeah, but you can see the rust right there coming down from the GE symbol. It looks really good, man. I'm really, I like these pigments. These are great. I'll link these in the video and I'll link them in the, the uh, and I'll add them on my website. Um, under, on my website, there's a, a tab, in siphonimager.com, there's a tab for, uh, crafting products that I use and, and all those links go to Amazon. I don't know, um, uh, you know, I, I believe people have access to Amazon no matter where they, they live. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm I'm spoiled. I live I live here. <laughs> and uh I use Amazon frequently. But but um all the links are Yeah, look at that, that's nice. And I'll do there's some little pox here in the in the uh casing of the of the fridge. We'll just load some rust up in those pox and kind of just drag them down just a little bit. Just like that. That's nice. Darken that up inside there. Pack a little bit more in there. Drag it down. Maybe a little bit on the corner here. This is a good... A good... Uh, product. You know, at the end of the day, you're like... Okay, I've painted it, but man, it still feels like I need that extra little layer of something. I don't know what. This here, man, this will this will be that what? Rust this corner out here a little bit. Sort of light circle strokes here. let the camera focus on that so you can see it <clears throat> boy I like this live stream in snap phase too man 1080 is nice I can live stream on here and and we can paint and do all kinds of stuff I mean that looks pretty good man uh, for some powders <laughs> on a piece of look, look at this at the end of the day all this is is let me let me get a piece over here. <laughs> Let me just... And I like to go back and remind myself what this is. So here's the refrigerator door. This is what it came from. You know, and this is where we're at now with it. So I like to go back and remind myself, you know, how it started and what and where we're at to, you know look at that a piece of pink foam to a refrigerator door i mean it really is a uh, pretty pretty neat process you know let me flip it over and you can see the other side of the refrigerator door Look at that. <laughs> I mean, so it's a pretty cool process, man. I'm, might be enough rust on the front. I don't want to. I don't want to go cuckoo with it. I've known to go cuckoo with it. It'll go from looking rusty to looking like it's on fire. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> you can't do too much of a good thing, I think. I might do a a little bit right here, just a little bit, right inside here. Up the edge of the door a little bit.
I've got a bigger brush for that. Where's my bigger? Here it is. It's really porous on the edge of this. This ought to pick it up really nicely. At any rate, let's read some comments. <laughs> yeah, fridge covered in water could be, yeah, for sure. But at any rate, yeah, I think we're, we're looking pretty good. I just wanted to share this rusty pigments with you folks and show you the current build where I'm at with this refrigerator. And, uh, Share these pigments and share me using them for the first time. But uh, at any rate, good stuff. I'm going to log off of here and you guys take care. Have a great night. Good talking to you. I appreciate you chiming in, man. And I'll link these pigments on my website. Um, and I'll try to remember to do it here in the video also. But uh, take care, folks, man. I appreciate you watching. And I'm going to get on to something some other part of the project now and uh